can love this. Dreams come true right here every Sunday. Defense, we got to knock a ball loose. Offense, we got to make a big play. It just takes one match to start a forest fire. There is no tomorrow for us. Tomorrow is today. One heartbeat, everybody together. You got to be mad as hell to play this game. Enjoy it. Play the game. Welcome to the National Football League. What's an offensive onslaught by the Dolphins today. Run, Suggs, run. Here comes Warwick Dunn. Lightning in the bottom, baby. like he's a 22-year-old rookie. He stepped over one lion and he's into the end zone. Matt Williams picked up the loose ball and ran in for a touchdown. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. Throws for Marvin. What a touchdown! You couldn't have drawn up this script in a thousand years. Great call by Bill Cowher. Touchdown. And the Seahawks respond. Hallelujah! Seahawks football! And the Panthers are still undefeated. Patriots blitzing every time. In trouble, and Rich hit as he throws it is second. The Denver Broncos have taken the game by the throat now. Charles Tillman robbed Randy Moss like a thief in the night. Ryan Westbrook, he's going, he's gone. This place is in a state of shock. Power football by the Houston Texans. And it's all going the Bengals way. This ain't the same old Bengals. This is the new Bengals. It's a football team that's got some nuts and it's got some pride and will be ready to go this coming Sunday. Dante Hall's going to do it again. The human joystick on an unbelievable kick return. Dante rolls out to the right. Five seconds to go in the first half. Deep to the left. I love it. Wow, what a wrinkle from Mike Barnes. Wow. Let's define what a FIBA pitch is today. Be as physical as you've ever been. Priest holds an all-time record for total touchdowns. Throwing in the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Ravens. And the Cowboys are going back to the playoffs. Oh, my gosh, what a turn of events. Patriots defense needed to make one more play, and they made it. Gillette Stadium explodes with snow in the air again. Here it is. The season's on the line. McCown steps up, fires into the end zone. The Cardinals have knocked the Vikings out of the playoffs. And the crowd in Lambeau Field has erupted. On the final play. It's on to St. Louis. Now you can smell Peyton Manning, MVP today, and he is white hot. Kick on the way. Gary Anderson, the curse of the Ravens, never more. Donovan McNabb should have been sacked in the backfield, but he escapes like Houdini once again. He makes the play. This offensive juggernaut has been unstoppable so far in the playoffs. Throws down, Bill Smith at the 45 to the 40. It's over. It's over. It's over. And we are going to the NFC Championship game. And the Patriots will advance to the AFC Championship game. Picked off by Ty Long. Patriots defense once again carrying this game. The Patriots go to the Super Bowl. Deshaun Foster stretching it outside, bouncing off tacklers. The improbable 
season for the Carolina Panthers continues. They're the champions of the NFC. The changing skies above the road to the Super Bowl signaled a season of transition. One constant was the need to get motivated prior to kickoff. You got to be mad as hell to play this game. When we come out of that locker room, be mad at anything. You ready? Let me get some of that. Preparing to go head to head was occasionally too intense. While every team got fired up before a game, some flamed out near the end. The Saints produced one of the season's most stunning plays, but their mad dash for survival lacked a finishing kick. Brooks pumps, throws down the near sideline to Stallworth, and Stallworth tries to get away from some people and does to the 38 yard line. He needs a block. He needs a couple there. They're going to lateral the ball to Michael Lewis. Michael Lewis tries to stay alive. He'll lateral it to Deuce. Deuce needing help. He laterals across the field, and the Saints are going to take it in with Payton. Jerome Payton diving into the end zone. I thought I'd seen it all covering the Saints. I'd never seen that. I don't think I ever will again. That one is truly one for the record books and all sorts of incredible plays along the line for the Saints to stay alive, pending the extra point by John Carney. And he missed no! Losing was a major irritation for head coaches, but there were also other irritations. Perhaps what bugged head coaches the most were the men who wore the black and white stripes. Hey, Carl! Hey, Carl! Mr. Referee! They're saying they blew it dead. They're saying they blew it dead. They're saying they blew it, all right? They blew it. They blew it. It won't be the last time, okay? That's awful! That's awful! That's awful! That's awful! That's awful! I got the flag ready to go. I got the flag. There! That's a touchdown. Throw my flag! Throw my flag! I asked you if that's reviewable. And I said touching of a kick is definitely reviewable. There, okay. Possession of a kick in the middle of the field is not reviewable. Why didn't you say that? I told you that, Coach, three times. You said touching of a kick is it's reviewable. Absolutely. Isn't that touching of a kick? Absolutely. There you have it. If we rule it was a catch and a fumble, it's their ball right there. What? It's their ball right there. I'll tell you, why do we have officials? Just f*** up the game. Head coaches were also puzzled and perturbed by the failings of their players. You can't tackle like that as a Jaguar. You can't go in there and throw a flipper and run by the guy like that. You have got to bring, look, you have got to tackle better than that. All right, we're clear on that? He can't catch. He can't line up. I mean, come on. He can't tackle. We've got to be the dumbest team in America in terms of playing the game. And I'm highly critical because of the way we give games away. A year after winning the AFC title, the Raiders posted a 4-12 record and became a textbook study in error-prone play. The defending world champion Buccaneers also stumbled. Favored by many to repeat, Tampa Bay finished with a 7-9 mark. Brad Johnson on play fake, drops, throws the ball. Yeah, look at it. Intercepted, picked off left side. All of a sudden, it's a nightmare on Elm Street. In week 11, John Gruden deactivated Keyshawn Johnson, essentially firing the wide receiver. You got to take a little criticism. Take a deep breath. Don't get sloppy on that. Ah, look. Gruden didn't like Johnson's attitude. Johnson didn't like Gruden. Hey, Gruden! The downfall of the Buccaneers was as surprising as the ascendance of the Carolina Panthers.
Just two seasons ago, the Panthers had lost 15 straight games. Good to see you, Steve. Thank you again. Good seeing you too, man. How's everything? Well, we can't complain. We got some enthusiasm well, down here. It's good, man. I mean, these people, these people deserve better. That's for sure. You know, hopefully we can deliver. John Fox molded a modestly talented team into a hungry contender. We like a pack of wolves, and we ain't eight in a while. Stephen Davis, number 48, was the closest thing to a star on a team that was hard to beat at crunch time. The quarterback, journeyman Jake DeLome, came off the bench to lead a last gasp victory in the season opener, then started for the rest of the year. The scrappy DeLome became one of the prime movers for the Perseverant Panthers, who usually bared their fangs at the finish. Fourth down, Carolina. One timeout, 22 seconds on the clock. They trail Jacksonville by five. Here's DeLone back to throw. Looks, looks, fires for throw in the end zone. He got it! Touchdown! Touchdown for Nick Rowe! I don't believe it! Oh, baby! Looks like I can take 15 more, baby. <laughs> Fourth quarter, man, finish! Fourth quarter! The Panthers are at the five. The shotgun has it again. Fire Smith caught it. Touchdown! Steve Smith caught it. Are you kidding me? This is incredible. The Cardiac Cats tied a league record for most overtime victories. Good snap. Kick by Casey's on the way. Up, 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 and gone! It's gone! We built the land. We built the land. We built the land. Carolina was short on glamour, but long on grit. When the regular season ended, the Panthers were champions of the NFC South. Here we go. The road to the Super Bowl was most perilous for NFL head coaches, like the Giants' Jim Fossil. 21 carry, I right slot, X divide, 35 Bob O'Casper. Hold on to your nuts, McNally, here we go, man. Fossil's seven-year career in New York collapsed with the Giants' season. Unbelievable. After the smoke had cleared, nearly one quarter of the league's head coaches had lost their jobs. In Atlanta, Dan Reeves was gone before the season ended. Greg Williams' Buffalo offense disappeared. Then so did he. Bill Callahan was fired one year after leading Oakland to the Super Bowl. Dick Geron was out after five years in Chicago. Steve Spurrier discovered that Washington was a long way from Gainesville, and Dave McGinnis bid a tearful farewell to Arizona. I've never been afraid to tell you that I love you. Pete said he'd hold me up. I've never been afraid to open myself to you because you've got my heart. You've got my heart. While many failed to live up to expectations, two men far exceeded them. Marvin Lewis had never been a head coach at any level when the down and out Cincinnati Bengals hired him. Bill Parcells had been a head coach for 15 years with three different NFL teams before he was lured out of retirement to restore the proud tradition of the Dallas Cowboys. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Let's go, everybody's running, let's go. In minicamp, these two very different men on, James, went right on, to work. Waiting on you. Why are you last? You ought to be your coach. Don't be afraid to run some of these veteran guys now. They need to start practicing around here. Come on, just come off the line, Ab. Don't be prancing now. Ah, come on, come on. What's his first name? And don't call me sir. I ain't in the army. Just call me Bill. Don't stand there. I can get anybody up there standing. It's like beating farts out of dead mules on some of these guys. You get where you belong, quit talking all the time. If you get your feelings hurt, that's too bad. He's lucky he's got some talent and ability because he's high maintenance, boy. Oh, honey, you're going to be tired of me. Oh, you're going to be tired of me. We got to find us a free agent wide out. My man here has worn out his welcome. Wear his ass out. He'll either get back to playing or he'll quit. And you could tell him I told you to. No one said it was going to be easy. It's like looking for hen's teeth. I told him the first day that I ever met him, get your expectations up. Cause that's where mine are. You'll be all right, honey. You'll be all right. You know why? Because I ain't going to let you fail. 
I promise you. We've started to turn the corner. We're not around it. So we have something to look forward to. Let's go, baby! What's up today? You tired? Secret. Sir. I want to be one of the greatest to ever play this game. That's not a secret. But I want to be better than Rice. That's right. Y'all got to help me. And we're going to help you. We'll block the blitz. I told you we were going to block the blitz. A year from now or six months from now, I don't know when, you're going to pray they blitz. A little pressure coming. With these receivers we got out here, you'll be wishing for it. It's like picking chickens. From the very start, the Cowboys and the Bengals were transformed by their new head coaches. you now let's go you be aggressive hey get a smile on your face about to kick their ass let's go i want to try to throw a touchdown pass. That's wild. and he throws it right over to the end zone touchdown that's the way to go fellas boy. there you go by six o'clock tonight i'll have forgotten all about it i'll be sitting at my desk looking at the film trying to figure out how we ever won the game we got to keep pounding okay we got to keep playing like we're down i know i know Price has him. He shovels it forward. It is picked off, and Ian Gold is going into the end zone. Touchdown, Broncos. We can't win for losing. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. When we're not as good as people think we are, nor are we as bad. And we're somewhere in the middle, and let's just keep working forward and up. Everybody together, one heartbeat. One heartbeat today, baby. Let's go. I don't know why I, I don't get convinced about what I'm seeing. Let's go, Dallas. Let's go. I never am convinced. You know, I'm always thinking that there's better for us. We can whip these guys. We can whip them. One, two, three. Harvey! Looking for Come Peter Warwick. Long. He's got oh. him at the 35. Breaks out of a tackle. It went over their heads, actually, which is a good thing. It went right over their heads. They're not satisfied. This ain't the same old Bengals. This is the new Bengals. This is a football team that's got some pride and will be ready to go this coming Sunday. Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, on year. what? On a great year. Uh, I have no mental defense for what happens to me because whether you won or you lost, there's always problems. I can't take these minus plays, boys. And it's probably one of the things that drives me away from the game. I need a respite from that feeling sometimes. Whose gap is that? What are you thinking about, son? What do you think you're doing? Come on, baby. Now, we got to have that 218. You got to get the call. We should be able to block that. We got four guys back there. Berg, who is supposed to get 52? What's the matter with you guys? He don't have any idea. And you know, and you know I don't bitch at the officials. Oh, I know that. Come on. You know, from the time we got started, we said we were going to bring the NFL back here. They tell me the NFL's back here. <laughs> it's back. And that was NFL football out there today. It was the NFL atmosphere. It was fun. Everybody had fun. Well, you like football? This is it tonight, boy. Someone says we're eight and five going into the last three weeks of the season. You guys would have a conga line here before the season started. After six losing seasons, the Bengals had earned the right to celebrate an eight and eight record. I told the guys, be proud. Many of them did things that people said they couldn't do. Uh, they've played some of the best football they've played in their lives. We're not satisfied, we're not finished, but many guys have come a long way. The Cowboys are going back to the playoffs for the first time since 1999. This was by far the best win that I've had here in Dallas. I just thought our guys were really good today. I'm just proud of them. They played hard today. You can't call them losers anymore. Is there something else now? Bill Parcells had willed Dallas back into the playoffs, but in the first round, the high-flying Carolina Panthers brought the Cowboys back to earth to stay on the road to the Super Bowl. 12. Twice before, Dick Vermeil has completed the road to the Super Bowl. He knows it's not a sprint, but more like the Tour de France. There will be times when you can coast and times when you need to put the pedal to the metal. Kansas City raced out of the starting gate with Dante Hall returning kicks for four touchdowns in the first five games. An incredible punt return by Dante Hall. He's got it. He cut back left. It is a touchdown. Dante Hall makes the first man miss. Looking to try to get to the outside. 
He's in trouble, surrounded. Now he gets to the left side. He's got nobody but the kicker in front of him. Here he goes! Here he goes! Come on, Dante! Come on, Dante! Dante Hall's going to do it again. The human joystick with the touchdown! Man, we make a good TV show, don't we? Now. We make a good TV show. <laughs> Oh, you like a soap opera, right? right? Bunch of drama all the time. All the time. The Chiefs played a football version of Survivor. Each week, they did whatever was necessary to remain on the NFL's undefeated island. Stretches out for the football. Ten, five, touchdown! The Chiefs win in overtime. Four to 34. Kansas City's high-tech offense was a stark contrast to its down-to-earth blue-collar coach. The Chiefs rode their 9-0 start to the AFC West title and were led by Priest Holmes' league record 27 touchdowns, just one milestone racked up by the league's highest scoring team. Dick Vermeil, 100 NFL career victory. Vermeil had his Chiefs pointed towards the Super Bowl, and his wife Carol wanted to see him get there in style. For the final leg of his journey, she gave him a new mode of transportation. But Vermeil knows in the NFL, you win with men, not machines. And his passion for his players is what really drove the Chiefs. Play like he did today. Nobody I've ever coached deserves it more than this guy. Vermeil once coached this guy to a Super Bowl title. But Kurt Warner's fortune has changed drastically since his fairy tale season. In week one, Warner fumbled six times and suffered a concussion. Mike March turned to Mark Bulger, and Warner, the former MVP, became a most valuable backup. Bulger led the league in interceptions, but once he took over, he wouldn't be replaced until this week 17 hit sidelined him. For most of the season, a quarterback controversy raged in St. Louis. Mark Bolger is our quarterback. Yeah, but the last two weeks. Mark Bolger is our quarterback. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. Mark Bolger is our quarterback. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. Last week, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. Mark Bolger is our quarterback, okay? Bolger may have been the quarterback, but most of the Rams' fireworks were provided by Torrey Holt. Holt led the NFL in yards receiving and catches, but it was a play he didn't make in the divisional playoffs that might haunt him. Wide open middle of the field, it's right, got it, Torrey Holt dropped the football. Oh my goodness gracious. Holt's Rams staged a miraculous fourth quarter comeback against the Panthers. And it bounces, it's free, it's a free ball near the 40 yard line, I think St. Louis has it. But they will definitely be taking a shot in the end zone. But they didn't and the Rams were just 15 yards from a game-winning touchdown. Mike Martz is going to go for the field goal. Martz is not going to try to get in the end zone. That doesn't show a lot of confidence in Mark Bolger, the quarterback. That is not Mike Martz football, typically. That is unbelievable. In the second overtime, it was the Panthers who stayed aggressive, found the end zone, and advanced to the NFC title game. Throws down, Bill Smith at the 45 to the 40. It's the it's free. He is as old school as they come. If you could stitch it up, tape it up, or wrap it up, Steve McNair was going to play. I'll tell you what, I can't believe my quarterback. I, I said all week, I said he's playing. In my mind, because I know what kind of guy he is. This guy, the terror, this guy. He's got a hole in his cap. He's got a hole in his cap.
he's unbelievable, man. He, he knows how important it is, you know, to, to be. He, he's about team. Watch this block by the kid here. And so is Peyton Manning, who, like McNair, was willing to sacrifice his body for his team. <laughs> okay, hey, give me time. We'll hit the touchdown here, okay? Manning was far more effective throwing to his teammates than blocking for them. The NFL's leader in yards passing became the first quarterback to have five consecutive 4,000-yard seasons. Hey, baby. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. He threw a career-high six touchdown passes in his hometown, New Orleans. Turn out the line. And after most of the country had turned their lights out and gone to sleep, he and his favorite target, Marvin Harrison, helped the Colts stun the defending champions by rallying from a 21-point deficit with less than four minutes to play. They're going to come after this one, a 29-yarder snap. The ball is down. The kick is up. It is good. Colts win. Night football game for the ages. By midseason, even the Titans were watching the MVP candidates every move hoping to witness a rare Manning mistake. You got one MVP, that's Steve. Payton. Twice, Manning and the Colts defeated the Titans on their way to the AFC South title. And in both games, Harrison seized the spotlight and the ball. McNair also benefited from a sure-handed receiving core. Touchdown, Titans! Though they hardly commanded the same respect as Harrison. Drew Bennett, you're on my fantasy team, but I'll never start you because you suck. How does that feel? Can McNair come up with some magic? Throws left corner for Bennett. Touchdown, Titans! McNair on fourth and ten shows why he's the man. McNair finished as the NFL's highest-rated passer and was named co-MVP with Manning, who, along with head coach Tony Dungy, entered the playoffs trying to shed a can't-win-the-big-one label. Against the Broncos, Manning and Harrison were unstoppable and untouchable. Manning threw five touchdown passes, and his near-perfect play continued against Dick Vermeil's Chiefs. Let's go play football! Manning was playing football at a level few have achieved. He was in the zone, and his Colts were on their way to the AFC Championship. McNair suffered through a miserable playoff performance in Baltimore, but his play-through-pain spirit was epitomized by Eddie George who, despite a dislocated shoulder, ran for nearly 100 yards and avenged five consecutive losses to Ray Lewis and the Ravens. When the NFL's oldest player kicked the game-winning field goal, the Titans proved that age and pain are merely obstacles, not roadblocks, on the road to the Super Bowl. Like Steve McNair, Brett Favre taught us that you can tape up a broken bone, but only Favre showed us how to play with a broken heart. Irvin Favre taught his son how to look like a football player, and as his high school coach, he taught him how to be a football player. One day after Irvin Favre died, Brett played the greatest game of his career. Guns the left side of the end zone, and it's... is on fire tonight. Favre's rocket right arm heaved passes towards the heavens, and as if guided by an angel, they kept finding a packer. Michael Walker leaping grab end zone, touchdown! One week later, Favre's mourning and magical play continued. Power eye formation right side of Brett Favre. He takes, fakes the handoff, back to throw, looks the end zone. Side arms right side, and it's a touchdown! The Packers beat the Broncos. But the sun would set on their season unless the Cardinals, playing at the same time in Arizona, rallied to defeat the Vikings. Here it is. The season's on the line. McCown takes the snap. He steps up. He's all by himself. Fires into the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. The Cardinals have knocked the Vikings out of the playoffs. And the crowd in Lambeau Field has erupted. On the final play of the game in Arizona. Packers sideline erupts. The Packers 
Brett Favre's wild emotional ride would continue in the wild card round as the man he once called his father figure was returning to Green Bay as head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. Mike Holmgren was 5-0 at Lambeau Field in playoff games, but that was when he was calling the plays for Brett Favre, not trying to stop him. Long count, Favre takes back to throw, pumps short, now throws it over the middle to the end. Touchdown! Yes! Yes! Favre with a scoring pass now in 25 consecutive games. Favre's hot play persisted, and in overtime, his former backup made a season-ending mistake. Short drop, quick throw, left side. Yes, yes. It was quite a two-week stretch for Brett Favre. Playing with a heavy heart, he was grieving and celebrating at the same time as he and his Packers moved further down the road to the Super Bowl. Five days after he was released by the Patriots, Lawyer Malloy helped his new team beat his old team 31 to nothing in the season opener. The absolute last thing the Patriots wanted, they got. In your face, Bill Belichick. 16 weeks later, the teams met again, and again the score was 31 to nothing. But this time, it was New England who got the better of the Bills and Malloy. How did the Patriots fashion such a stylish makeover? Well, Bill Belichick might not be big on fashion, but he knows how to tailor a ferocious defense. New England gave up the fewest points in the league and had an AFC best 41 takeaways. Being rushed, fires to the right. Picked off. Tyra, he's going to go all the way. Back to throw, Pennington throws. Tipped in the air. Picked off. Will he get it? He is going to run it in for a touchdown. The fifth time this season they have returned to pass interception for a touchdown. See, that's how they've been winning all year, like that. Just like that. Actually, they found all kinds of ways to win. In Denver, they committed an intentional safety to improve field position with the hope of getting the ball back. It worked, and with 30 seconds to go, they won the game. Looking to the throw, fires to the left, caught, touchdown! In Indianapolis, they mounted a last-second goal line stand. About the only thing this team lost after September was an overtime coin toss in Miami. Dolphins win the coin toss. Oh, wait a second. It's a screw up here. He may have felt shortchanged on the coin toss, but his bomb in overtime was right on the money. Now nobody there. Now he shoots it long and deep for Troy Brown. He's got it. He's got it. The 15 to the 10. Touchdown. Touchdown. And the Patriots win in overtime. Oh, baby. Brady led the Patriots to wins in their final 12 regular season games. In week 14, a blizzard blanketed the East Coast, but New England fans proved to be just as tough as the Patriots. And after they sidestepped Mother Nature, they watched their team run over Miami. Back to throw Fiedel on first down, fires, intercepted, touchdown, Teddy Bruschi! The win clinched the AFC East title. A month later in the divisional playoff against the Titans, more wicked weather arrived. But New England was happy to be home for the coldest game in Patriots history. Where you to be, baby? Takes the snap on third and six. Time fires down the middle. Left Cut, touchdown, Patriots. For the second time in three years, Adam Vinatieri's weather-defying kick sent the Patriots to the AFC Championship. Kick on the way, and it is... With 13 straight wins, the Patriots were red hot in frigid Foxborough. On a warm September night, 
Philadelphia got fired up for the first game in its new stadium by bringing back a fictional folk hero. But for Philly's real life leading man, it was a real rocky start. Donovan McNabb and the Eagles started the new season the same way they ended the last one, by getting beat up by the Bucks. Yeah, I'm gonna knock that chest off. It's a beautiful stadium. Now all they have to do is find a football team worthy of it. McNabb's struggles continued in week two. I cannot remember Donovan having a game even approaching this for futility. Donovan McNabb looks horrendous. After an 0-2 start, McNabb was blindsided by racially charged comments from Rush Limbaugh. I'm not here to, to judge anyone. What was said was said. You guys make the decision if you feel it was racist. You know, I'm, I'm a football player, and, and that was my dream. My dream was to play football, play in the NFL, and I'm gonna continue to fulfill my dream and hopefully lead this team to a Super Bowl. Lead might be the most important function McNabb performs for Philadelphia. We didn't bend them to the bottom. We didn't roll ourselves out at the bottom, man. Now we feel like we play like that, man. Let's do it, man. We way better than this. We get a good play, we bring ourselves back. We good, man. We good. If you believe it, I already believe it. If you believe it, we let's go. The player who turned the Eagles' season around was second-year running back Brian Westbrook. The 10, the 5, touchdown, Brian Westbrook! Westbrook dangerous every time he has his hands on the football. And the play that saved the season was this miracle in the Meadowlands with just over a minute to play. Brian Westbrook, he's going, he's gone, I don't believe it. Westbrook was part of a three-pronged running back attack that featured Deuce Staley and number 28, Correll Buckholder. Looking for running room, he's free at the 15, at the 10, he jukes his man at the five, Correll Buckholder. The Eagles were fortunate their running backs were so effective because none of their receivers caught a touchdown pass until week nine. Mitchell, touchdown, a wide receiver. Freddie Mitchell caught the strike. But head coach Andy Reid found creative ways to lead the Eagles to a third straight division title. He is going deep for Westbrook, who leaps. Touchdown! What a play! We done been to this point before. This ain't the end. This is the beginning. We need to finish what we started in training camp. In the divisional playoff against Brett Favre and the Packers, Philadelphia fell behind 14 to nothing. The Eagles asked Donovan McNabb to bring them back again. His performance was symbolic of Philadelphia's season. Fires, and it is complete for a touchdown for Tom Pinkston. It is 4th and 26. And the Eagles' season may very well hinge on this play. This is the ball game right this here. Game for the Eagles. McNabb's heroics helped send the game into overtime. Freddie Mitchell, does he have the first down? He does. It was the kind of play Brett Favre had been making for weeks. But Favre's final pass of the season ended the Packers' dream and kept the Eagles' Super Bowl hopes alive. David Akers has just sent the Eagles into the NFC Championship game. Hey, no idea how you do it. But I know this, your heart is big as my waist. You guys are the best. It is cold. The wind chill is 20. It is snowing. It is the AFC Championship game. The white towels are big wave. The flares are going skyward. What a night. You got to believe that everybody in this group is going to contribute. Everybody in this group is going to play well. Come on. We ain't scared. Yeah. We ain't scared of y'all. They must feel it. I feel it. You feel it. This is the NFC Championship game. Patriots are using all the offensive weapons. Tom Brady spreading that ball. Oh, boy, I'll tell you what, though. Is he threading the football? Brady fakes the pass left. Now fires left, wide open. Touchdown, David Gibbons. And the Patriots take the opening drive and go 65 yards. We got to punch him in the mouth and take it. We got to punch him in the mouth and take it. What does Carolina still have left in the tank? They've been on the road the last two weeks. I guess we're going to find out. Sin Muhammad. Panthers draw 
first blood. It's going to take a whole lot more than that to beat this team, I tell you that much. This offensive juggernaut has been unstoppable so far in the playoffs. The Patriots are going to come out and do some press coverage on the wide receivers, get physical with them at the line of scrimmage, and they're not going to let those receivers run free into the secondary. Time in the postseason, they've been forced to punt. in motion the Pinkston side. McNabb is tripped up and down he goes across the 30. And is there a penalty? Let's see. Now he's looking over at the official like, hey, uh, how come there wasn't a penalty flag there? He's hurt too. That's the kind of game we playing, huh? That's the kind of game we playing? They're only down 15-0. Peyton Manning and company got to get it in gear and get this thing in the end zone. Moving the football well right now. It's a nice run again by Andrew and James. He's got to seal the deal here and get seven. And Edge gets the handoff, starts to the left side, runs into traffic, but gets to the goal line, touchdown! Andrew and James punched it in. 15 to 7 now. It is still 7 to 3, Panthers. Eagles Not trying to get something going. Here comes a blitz by Cousin, floats it downfield. Manning, did he pick it off? He did! Seeing Donovan get up off of the ground too many times. Short drop looks, it's a slant. Manning picks that off. He's got his second pick of the ball game. Go two. That's two. They better leave him alone. In the pocket. Plenty of time down the middle of the field. It goes. It's batted in the air. It's picked off by Ricky Manning. Three interceptions today. Don't give up. Pitch to Foster trying to turn the far side. Gets over Hoover. Bounces off the tackle. Still keeps the legs turning and dives towards the end zone. Touchdown! Oh, my goodness! And this is getting serious. Eagles just can't lose the point. Come on, keep your head up. Come on. Don't be spinning. Keep on. coming. Keep coming. Just keep coming. And the Patriots have totally befuddled Manning so far this afternoon. Dumps it off to the right, and it's picked off. Got to be his worst nightmare. Intercepted Tyra, his third. He's had some great games. This is obviously not one of them, but we wouldn't be here without Peyton Manning. Come on! We got to raise our game up! And now it is down to miracle stage. And this will be the last chance for Philly. Depper looking, firing, and it is... On the road to the Super Bowl, only two teams remain. Now, they compete for a prize that only one can win. Yes, Charlotte, there is a Super Bowl, and we're in it.